It's cold and it's marching. And cold is law. So uh, there's not a possibility that someone goes and say, hey, uh, you pay me, but I'm just scamming you, so I'm not sending you the product you bought from me. That's not his option. It's not ever happening. Um, you don't need a lawyer for this because the contract itself controls everything. The contract is the only law that happens. And it's more powerful than everything before. So, the contract from Oracle, Oracle is basically a program that can read information from outside. So this Oracle basically says, hey, I can see here that you received your product and everything's fine. So, this event, that everything's okay, the event of the contract uh, triggers the, the execution of the contract. So say, okay, if everything is fine with your product, then I'm sending you the, the money to the guy and then I'm settling it. So basically, we now eliminated the trust of the equation. Because, okay, first, if I'm uh, negotiating someone I don't know, I don't trust him, I need a third part that regulates this thing. And with the smart contract, I don't need to trust anyone in order to negotiate. Because I'm safe, because the Zenith Smart Chain makes me safe. The Zenith Smart Chain guarantees that whatever I'm doing, it will be executed the way it was intended. And since I started talking about what is performance, what makes a software and application have a high performance, we have so many technical details of talking about blockchain and smart chain, but we could present this in three main groups. So, first of all, is the cost of transaction. Of course, it makes no sense to have a very nice working smart chain, but it costs so much that the price I need to pay is way higher than the third party I had before. Maybe the lawyer or the, the guy who's working the supply chain, the, the aviation officer that connects me to the jet uh, owners. So, cost of transaction is one very important thing. Second of all, is the speed. Because, okay, I have the best application to work, it works as intended, but it takes me three hours. And I don't want to have to wait, it's 2022. You know, if a website takes more than one second to load, I'm already stressed out. And of course, it needs to be easy to use, because it makes no sense if you develop this marvelous piece of engineering, but people cannot simply understand how to use this. And if people don't use this, it's, it's pointless. So I need to make uh, possible that every developer and every people from our community is able to extract the maximum power of this um, tool. And why Tenik gets um, a very special position when compared to the main smart chains we have in the market right now. So, first point is transaction throughput. Basically, uh, for every of these smart contract transactions I told you about, we have a limited amount of number per second transactions per second that you can, you can perform. And um, if your, if your uh, transaction throughput is way too slow, you can have some, some issues, like we had in Ethereum, for example. We had a case that in last year, Ethereum price is going down, and people had their money allocated in the chain in one of the centralized apps, Uniswap. And of course, if the price is going down, I want to take my money out of there because there isn't just losing money. But the, everyone tried to do this at the same time. And what happens is, uh, the, the network got blocked, everyone got the money stuck because it wasn't fast enough. So the first thing is, Tenik has the highest throughput of every single competitor today. Every three seconds, it has a new block. Ethereum does it in average of 13 seconds. And second of all, as a good example, we recently implemented a Tupan minting project. If we try to do this in the Ethereum network, the whole Ethereum network would need to dedicate 10% of his whole capacity just to run the Tupan minting project. Do you know how much, how much we are operating in the Zenix margin? It's not even 1%, not even 1%. So the main competitor would lose 10% of this throughput capacity. 
and it doesn't even scratch us. So, this is possible because we have um, this parallel EVM execution. So EVM is basically what makes your smart contract work. And when I mean parallel, you know, imagine you have a computer and you have a single core computer, like we did, I don't know, 20, 25 years ago. It's so slow, so of course you need like a four core computer, eight core computer, because just think, it's like two people working together in one project is better than one, four is better because they can work together and achieve the, um, the application faster. Of course, transaction costs, uh, it doesn't matter if I can do everything faster and in a higher volume, but if in the end I will pay way more than everyone else. And on this case, I have a very interesting situation. I can give you three examples, the main competitors of Tenix Smart Chain today and how their costs influence. So, first of all, do you have an idea how much costs to make an Ethereum transaction? This is a graphic from a few days ago. So as you can see here, it costs around $2.60 to perform a transaction. Now think, I grew up in Brazil, and the situation in Brazil is that we have a lot of talented people living in poor areas, living in favelas, and the thing is that there I have a huge market waiting and a huge potential of talented developers that could be working and making our blockchain industry better. But of course, this value can be nothing for you. But this value for them, it's an uh, entry barrier. They cannot participate in this industry. So you're cutting off a huge amount of the market just by putting the, the costs on this level. If you try the, the Binance, the situation is a bit better, but still, you have a cost of 20 cents per transaction. Now let's say that we developed a um, very unique messenger, because you know, we started with WhatsApp, but then WhatsApp started to get a bit uh, sketchy, you know, we don't know who is take, uh, taking a look into your private conversations, so we jumped to Signal, and it was a bit better, but then it's starting to feel like it's going the same way with WhatsApp. What if we develop an application that's a fully centralized messenger, where you can always have your, the control of your private conversations, your private information. Nice. However, if it costs me 20 cents for every message I send, this cannot be a very efficient app. So, the best solution, the best infrastructure that I could choose to develop my app would be by far the Tenix Smart Chain. The Tenix Smart Chain, it's so much below one single cent of dollar then it's almost like your messenger wouldn't even like spend any money, you know, because you can get like one dollar and speak basically the whole year and you wouldn't notice a difference. So this is the power of your chain, you know. And this was a single example of one application. Now imagine every application you have your phone, the amount of transactions when you save something when you send a message to someone, when you contact someone, make a transaction, you made a purchase. Now, this, this service is going through a third party that maybe doesn't charge you, but he collects your information, your personal data. You don't have the control. And if you don't have the control of your data, you don't have your freedom. But if you can use the Zinc Smart Chain to develop applications that you can use in your daily life, then you finally bring your freedom back to you. So, uh, and of course, because I have this high performance, the core, the core reason why I have a smart chain is that developers, very talented people with knowledge, they can build all these applications I talked about, you know, the applications that you have, your phone that belongs to, I don't know, Microsoft, Google, you can now have developers, independent developers, creating these applications on the Tenix Smart Chain. And of course, since I have the highest transaction throughput between Binance and Ethereum, because I can have this parallel execution, my transaction costs are way lower, so I can attract all this talent to my network. And because of that, with this, this basically means like how my application interacts with the smart contracts. 
with the smart chain. So, since I have the highest uh, performance in these electric queries, every application I run on the Tenix smart chain will have the best performance if the same application was deployed on Ethereum or Binance. So this is one more incentive to bring all the developers to our network. And of course, these were the, the differences uh, Tenix smart chain had, the unique points. But of course, we learned a lot since the blockchain first started. And it makes sense to take this knowledge and reuse it in your favor. So we actually learned with previous networks, got this uh, knowledge and improved it. So the first thing is EVM compatibility. This basically means that if you are an Ethereum developer, so if you develop stuff in the Ethereum network or the Binance network, your code with minimum, minimum changes can run on the Zenix smart chain. And what does that mean? It means that you know, all these developer, uh, experienced developers that are developing the Ethereum since the beginning, they can easily migrate to the Zenix smart chain because they have better performance, better costs, and they don't need to change their code. You know? Most of the codes just work fine, and some of the codes they need to adapt because they're expecting to pay more than $2 per transaction, and now they basically do it for free. So the only preoccupation is that now they need to pay way less in the Zenix smart chain. And of course, uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of the news, but Ethereum just changed from proof of work to proof of stake. This basically means that instead of all this computer power and all this electricity being spent, we just now do this in a very more sustainable way. Ethereum took seven years to do this, but Zenix smart chain was born of it. So yeah, so learning through the mistakes of the, the original developers, the original blockchains, also brings us. We can look at them and we see, okay, they did this good, so we can use this in our favor. They made a mistake here, we learn from the mistake, and then we prove the Zenix smart chain. And then, I was talking about all these decentralized apps, you know, taking your applications to your phone and moving to the smart chain because there, there's no middleman, you are responsible for your own data. But that's the deal. You, as a Zenic investor, how do you um, make money basically? You have your tokens and then the market's going good, the price is going up. So when you get your tokens, your Zenic points, the price is going up, it's good, then you can just pass it to someone else, use for something. But the thing is, this is basically dependent of the price. What if I told you that with the Zenix smart chain, you can actually make this money, like work as a smart asset? Because you know, instead of just waiting for the price to go up, so you depend on the market, you can actually allocate your assets from this moment on to some application that generates dividends for you. So just like Uniswap compound that you see in Ethereum, we can now have the Zenix smart chain, the same times of application, but with a way less cost, with a way higher performance. And of course, now you don't care about if the price is going up or not, because by the end of the day, every asset that you have is generating you profit, 100% of the time, you know? And, of course, if you have this type of application that generates the, you money according to the amount of assets you have, the demand on these assets goes up. And of course, what happens with the price? When you increase the volume in all of these applications, what is also happening is that we are generating more transactions in the network. So you have a huge volume of transactions and for each transaction, 50% of the transaction fee is burned and what happens with the offer of the Zenic token assets? The offer goes down because you're burning things. And if the offer goes down, at the same time that people want this because they're generating profit all the time, what happens with the price again? So this is one of the main, main, main reasons why we should invest in the Zenic smart chain. So, Talking about performance again, we have Ethereum, Binance, 
and the next merchant. Which one has the smallest cost of transaction? The Nick. Yeah, of course. Which one has the highest speed of transaction? And which one is the easiest one to use? But how do you know this? Did I? Of course, because the developers know, the developers, they already learned of Ethereum, they learned of Binance. So we are basically like taking every talented developer, every experienced developer and bring it to us because it's easy. We have a fully documented smart chain. But what about you? So I, I'm going to ask you a few more questions. We have one very, very special secret. But first, do you know how does an average full node look like if you're going to Bitcoin, Ethereum, any other network? Do you have an idea how a full node looks like there? I will show you. Have you ever seen this before? Yeah, that's the thing. In order to run a full node, you should be able to look at this. First of all, don't run scared. Try to understand and learn how to operate this. This is like this with every single other smart chain. How do you imagine a person that operates this looks like? So I'll give you three seconds and you imagine, okay, how the person that can do all these things I just said, how this looks like? Three, two, one. Did you imagine something like this? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I guess it did, I guess it did. So, fine. But I'm gonna ask you another question. How does a Zenik full node look like? Do you know the answer? How does it look like? What is the Zenik full node? Yeah, yeah, exactly, the hub, the Zenik hub. So the thing is, we have all this complicated stuff, but thanks to an amazing job of our developers. By the way, I'll do, some of the developers are camouflaged here, so I would ask you to please kindly make a round of applause for the developers of Zenik. They made such a good job that all that crazy stuff can be simplified in some object that's just put in your desk, in your table, sits there, does everything. And what does that mean? So I have one final question. How does a person who operates a sneak phone node look like? Can you picture this in your mind? Can you? I will show you how this looks like. You, you over there, people from Vietnam, the big group there, yeah, you, and you, and you, every single one of you, for the first time, we have the opportunity to act, to participate in the functioning of our smart chain. Because before, this was restricted, you know, to the nerds, to the computer scientists, to the software developers like me, and we are just sitting in our room with our thousands of bright screens and we are doing the whole work. But the thing is that this is not democratic enough. But when I'm looking at this audience and I see that every single one of you can be running your own full node and making this more decentralized and more secure, this is true democracy. This is true freedom. Thank you.